Hey, Pastor Kelly coming at you here. I'm sitting in a parking lot waiting on my wife to get out of the doctor. I've got her glasses on. She's got mine, but that's all right. I'm doing some Bible study today, and I thought I would share it with y'all. Um, if I have room, it looks like I'm eating up my computer off of fast air. But uh, studying Titus, and I've been doing some preaching to myself, and uh, thought I'd put it on a video for everybody. Titus is a young preacher that Paul took under his wing, and um, he's sending him his letter to prop him up and tell him what he should be, or how he should be getting out there and spreading God's word. In Titus 2.12, it says, Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the presence of the world. What that means, folks, is yes, we should deny ourselves of these lustful things that we do. We should present ourselves as good people, no different than an employee of a company going out and representing that company. We represent God as a Christian. Think about that. We represent God. When you say, Pastor Kelly, you represent God, we're just a Christian. No. The Bible tells us we all represent God to go forth and spread the news, go forth and preach the gospel. Every single one of us is called to preach. Every single one of us is called to evangelize. The news is always talking about evangelicals. Well, basically they should be just saying Christian, but they're afraid to say that word. There's no different than they'll say Christmas because we're all evangelicals. Every single one of us. That's all they mean. If you're a good Christian, you are an evangelical because you should at any given time praise Jesus' sweet name in public. Yeah, in public. <laughs> you know, but so many people are afraid to say it. I mean, so, so anymore, it's hard to even hear a God bless you, let alone praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to go on with this a little bit further because I've really found several. I love studying Titus, but I found several things in here that I was wanting to speak about. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey masters, to be ready to every good works. Folks, all this going against the policeman, it, it's ludicrous. The, if you're a Christian, there's no way you should ever do that. Because the Bible tells us, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Right here, Paul's telling us to be ready to obey principalities. To every good work. Ready, be ready to every good work. I've worked around police officers for years. And uh, as a volunteer firefighter and a medic, EMT. I would say that 85% of them are Christian. The other 15% of them want to be Christian. They're just afraid of it because, it, you know, we're all, you know, we're born with God written on our hearts. We're born with the knowledge that there is a higher being, uh, being God, um, written on our hearts. The Bible tells us this. Uh, it's just some of us tend to erase it in our minds and ignore our hearts. Well, there's the old saying, atheists, there's no atheist in a foxhole. Well, there's very few atheist police officers. So when we're downing these police officers, we're downing our fellow Christians. Are there bad ones? Are there bad Christians? Sure they are. Sure they are. Uh, do people slip? Sure they do. We should be praying for these police officers to do their jobs well, to do it godly, to be ready for every good work, and not downing them and praying against them, which I've seen happen on, on the internet. I've seen it happen many times. Respect these people. Respect these people for the job they do. And the Bible tells us that we should do that. The Bible tells us, it goes on to say, to speak evil of no man and be ready to be no brawler, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. 
that means anybody that messes up, don't be ready to jump down their throats. Give them a scripture or two and help them out. Bring them to Jesus. And if they know who Jesus are, is, bring them back. That's what we should do. That's what we should do. But after the kindness and the love of God, our survivors toward men, and su survived toward men, man appeared. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to the mercy of he who saved us. Not by works of righteousness. We can do all the good works in the world. We can't work our way to heaven. If we do not have the mercy, the saving grace of Jesus Christ written on our hearts, then we are not saved. If you do not believe that with all your heart and confess it with your mouth and not be ashamed of Jesus, then we are not saved. I pray you're not one of those. I pray you're not one of those stillborn Christians that went to a sermon at a cathedral or whatever and um, got in the Jones syndrome everybody else is going up and saying something and you do too I pray that's not you because if you didn't mean it when you said it it didn't take <laughs> I'm afraid to tell you if you didn't mean it when you said it it didn't take. The Bible tells us all will be revealed. There's nothing that will be hid in the house that won't be revealed later. The Bible tells us that. Nothing hidden that won't be revealed. So you might as well shout it on the rooftops. I, I didn't quite believe what I said, but I said it anyway because you know, Johnny and Janie over here did, so I did too. Well, if that's you, you're not saved and your eternal life, your eternal soul is in danger of burning forever rather than being in heaven with our Lord serving our Lord God above for the rest of eternity now <clears throat> I haven't been on for quite a while my health is not well it's not I appreciate all the prayers and I appreciate the prayers I'll probably get from this and it does help but uh Sometimes we're at the mercy of what man can do, and my health has not been well taught. Now, I'm hoping and praying, I pray every day, that I can get back into the groove and getting some more sermons on the internet, and much longer than this one. This one's going to be a short one. I'm doing it on my phone, and I don't have that much memory. It was just a spur of the moment. Obviously, it's not uh, rehearsed, <laughs> which is fine. It's the way it should be. You should be ready in season or out of season, you know? In season or out of season, ready to go with the Lord's word, and that's what I'm doing. Long way around the saying, I'm hoping to do a lot more Bible studies and a lot more sermons and put them on the internet, and hopefully do it just like I just did, uh, relating it to what's going on in the world right now. So, I'm gonna have to jump out of here now, but. Uh, and I, I really don't want to. The Lord's tugging on my heart to stay, but I, I'm really running out of power and running out of air. That's one of my biggest problems. I'm running, I run out of air when I'm talking too much. So, God bless you, one and all. We love you. Jesus loves you. Pastor Kelly, out of here.